In this lecture, we'll discuss the power and refrigeration cycles using idle gas as the working substance. We've seen that heat engines and refrigerators based on the Carnot cycle are practically difficult to realize. When an idle gas is the working substance, it is difficult to absorb and reject heat isothermally. Therefore, the Carnot cycle has to be modified by changing the heat addition and heat rejection processes from isothermal to other processes such as isobaric and isochoric processes. This results in power cycles such as the auto cycle, diesel cycle and the Brayton cycle. The spark ignition automotive engines operate on the auto cycle the diesel engine, that is the compression ignition engine, works on the diesel cycle and the gas turbine works on the Brayton cycle. In all these engines, the composition of the working fluid changes during the combustion process because the combustion takes place inside these engines. The products of combustion are ejected from the exhaust and fresh air and fuel are fed into the system. Therefore, Unlike the steam power plant and the vapor compression refrigerator, these engines do not strictly operate on a thermodynamic cycle. However, for analyzing these internal combustion engines, it is beneficial to devise cycles that closely approximate their operation. One such approach is the air standard cycle, which is based on the following assumptions. The air standard cycle assumes that the working substance is air which is assumed to be an idle gas and there are no inlets and exhaust processes. Another assumption that we'll make to analyze these engines using the air standard cycle assumption is that the combustion process is replaced by the heat addition process from an external source. Also heat rejection is by heat transfer to the surroundings and not by exhaust of the combustion products as it occurs in the real engines. Also, we'll assume in our analysis that air is thermally and calorically perfect. That is, we'll assume that air obeys the idle gas equation that is PV equals to RT and in addition its heat capacity is constant. Also, all processes we'll assume to be reversible. So these are the assumptions underlying the air standard cycle. Using these assumptions, we'll analyze the operation of the spark ignition engine, the compression ignition engine, and the gas turbine. And what we get is the auto cycle, diesel cycle, and the Brayton cycle. The air standard cycle helps in qualitative understanding of operation of these internal combustion engines and the dependence of their efficiency on the process parameters such as the pressures and the temperatures at various states. Let us first look at the auto cycle. The auto cycle is an idle cycle which forms the basis of the spark ignition engines. This cycle is executed in a cylinder piston arrangement. As we have already noted, that the heat addition and heat rejection processes which in a Carnot cycle are isothermal processes are not practically realizable. Therefore, in this cycle, the auto cycle and all other air standard cycles, we have to change the heat addition and rejection processes from isothermal to other processes. So in the auto cycle, we have two processes of compression and expansion that is on this PV diagram the air is compressed from state 1 to state 2 and air is expanded from state 3 to state 4 in isentropic processes which are same as what we do in a Carnot cycle but the heat addition and heat rejection processes are changed so the heat addition and rejection processes in the auto cycle are isochoric processes that is process 2 to 3 is the heat addition process and process 4 to 1 is the heat rejection process.
the other two processes are same as the Carnot cycle. Only the heat rejection and heat addition processes change. In nutshell, the auto cycle on a PV diagram, if we see, involves isentropic compression of the gas that is air from state 1 to state 2. Thereafter, heat is added in an isochoric process which goes from 2 to 3. And this process mimics heat addition during combustion that is initiated by a spark in a spark ignition engine. Thereafter, once the state of the gas is at very high pressure and temperature upon heat addition, the hot gas is expanded in an isentropic process from state 3 to state 4. And finally, heat QL is rejected in an isochoric process from state 4 to state 1. And this cycle can also be represented on a TS diagram. So you see that processes 1 to 2 and 3 to 4 are isentropic and therefore these processes are represented by vertical lines. And then we have two isochoric processes corresponding to heat addition at higher temperature and heat rejection at lower temperature. The thermal efficiency of this cycle can be obtained by noting that the thermal efficiency is equal to the work output that is the difference between the heat absorbed and heat rejected over the heat that is absorbed in the cycle and this is equal to 1 minus QL over QH as it is for any heat engine. Because we have assumed that the heat capacities are constant in the air standard cycles, then we can write QL, that is the heat that is rejected, is equal to MCV. So M is the mass of the gas within the system times the change in the temperature. So that is T4 minus T1. So in this process, heat rejection is taking place. And the heat that is absorbed is MCV. So in this isochoric process from 2 to 3, that is here, from 2 to 3, heat is being added. So the heat that is added during an isochoric process is equal to MCV T3 minus T2. So we can write this expression as, so MCV and MCV cancel out. So we can alternatively write this as we can further simplify this expression for thermal efficiency by noting that in an isentropic process TV raised to power gamma minus 1 is a constant where gamma recall is the ratio of the heat capacities at constant pressure and constant volume and we are assuming gamma to be a constant because heat capacities we have assumed to be constant therefore we can relate the temperatures at states 1 and state 2 with the volumes as T2 by T1 is equal to V1 by V2 raised to power gamma minus 1. But note that V1 is equal to V4 and V2 is equal to V3 because heat is added in an isochoric process. So this can be written as this but process 3 to 4 is an isentropic process and therefore this ratio is equal to T3 by T4. From this term and this term, we conclude that T4 by T1 is equal to T3 by T2. Therefore, these terms in the numerator and denominator cancel out and we get thermal efficiency is simply 1 minus T1 by T2. And from here, this relation we can write this as 1 minus 1 over 
v1 by v2 raised to power gamma minus 1. So what we conclude is that the thermal efficiency of the auto cycle is given by 1 minus t1 over t2 and that is equal to 1 minus 1 over the compression ratio raised to power gamma minus 1 where the compression ratio r is defined as v1 over v2 and that is also equal to v4 over v3 where these volumes correspond to the maximum and the minimum volumes that the gas will occupy within the piston cylinder arrangement in a spark ignition engine. Note that the efficiency of the auto cycle is solely a function of the compression ratio. Also from this TS diagram you see that the maximum and the minimum temperatures are T3 and T1 in this cycle. So if we have a Carnot heat engine that works between the maximum and minimum temperatures then the efficiency of the Carnot engine would be 1 minus T1 by T3 but clearly T3 is greater than T2 and therefore the efficiency of the auto cycle is clearly less than the efficiency of the Carnot cycle and that's because heat is being absorbed and rejected not in an isothermal process but in isochoric processes. Next let us consider the diesel cycle. Like all air standard cycles which are idealizations of what goes on in the corresponding internal combustion engines, the diesel cycle is an idealization of what goes on in a compression ignition engine. Unlike the spark ignition engine, in the compression ignition engine, the air is compressed to pressure and temperature that exceed the ignition point of the fuel. Then first this air is compressed and fuel is injected to the compressed air and when this fuel is injected because of high temperature the fuel ignites and the gas expands. This heat addition process is modeled as an isobaric process. Therefore compared with the auto cycle in the diesel cycle that is shown on this PV diagram, the heat addition process from 2 to 3 is an isobaric process and the pressure remains constant and all other three processes are same as that of the auto cycle. That is compared with a Carnot cycle, we have the same isentropic compression and expansion processes but the heat addition process is isobaric and heat rejection process is isochoric. And here we show the diesel cycle on the TS diagram. So the vertical lines again correspond to isentropic compression of air from state 1 to 2 and isentropic expansion of air from state 3 to state 4. And we have heat addition at constant pressure and heat rejection at constant volume. Now we can calculate the thermal efficiency of the diesel cycle. So to calculate the thermal efficiency of the diesel cycle, we start with a familiar definition of the thermal efficiency. So if we look at the ratios of heat rejected and heat added to the system, then heat that is rejected, QL, takes place during an isochoric process. Therefore, QL is equal to MCV T4 minus T1, whereas heat addition takes place in an isobaric process. So we have MCP T3 minus T2. And M, that is the mass of the working substance, cancels out and we know that Cp by Cv is equal to gamma. Heat capacities we are anyway assuming to be constant, therefore gamma is also a constant. So we can write this as 1 minus 
so we have t1 times t4 by t1 minus 1 divided by gamma times t2 and t3 by t2 minus 1 where gamma is cp by cv and it is a constant because heat capacities we have assumed to be a constant now note that if the diesel cycle and the auto cycle have the same initial state that is state 1 then for the same compression ratio that is the same maximum and minimum volumes within the cylinder piston arrangement then the auto cycle will have higher efficiency and the reason is that in the auto cycle heat is added in an isochoric process therefore if you plot an isochore on this ts diagram it would lie above the isobar and therefore heat is absorbed in an auto cycle at a higher temperature and therefore the efficiency of the auto cycle is higher than the diesel cycle provided the initial state is same and the compression ratio is same in practice however the diesel cycle operates at higher compression ratio so that the fuel ignites upon injection and therefore the efficiency of the practical diesel cycle is higher than that of the auto cycle next let us consider the Brayton cycle so the Brayton cycle is the ideal cycle for a simple gas turbine so the figure on the left shows how a real gas turbine works so air is first compressed by a compressor and thereafter it enters the combustion chamber where fuel is added and combustion takes place the high temperature products of combustion that exit the combustion chamber are expanded in a turbine and the exhaust gases are ejected to the environment in this process the turbine does some work and part of the work is used to run the compressor and the remaining part is used for power generation and if the gas turbine is used in a jet engine then the exhaust gases are expanded through a nozzle to generate thrust the figure on the right shows the air standard Brayton cycle the air standard Brayton cycle is an idealization of the processes that go on inside a gas turbine so as we have discussed earlier in the air standard cycle assumption we replace the heat addition in the combustion chamber with heat addition to an external source so therefore we have this heat exchanger where the compressed air receives heat and is heated and instead of the exhaust of the combustion products we have a heat exchanger through which the exhaust of the turbine is cooled by rejecting heat to the environment so that it comes back to its original state and therefore the thermodynamic cycle is completed the Brayton cycle is depicted on the figures below on a PV and TS diagrams so as we have noted the Brayton cycle is obtained by modifying the Carnot cycle with different heat addition and heat rejection processes in contrast to the Carnot cycle where the heat transfer processes are isothermal in the Brayton cycle heat addition that is process 2 to 3 and heat rejection that is process 4 to 1 they take place at constant pressure so heat addition and rejection processes are isobaric in the Brayton cycle so this is the Brayton cycle on a PV diagram and here we have Brayton cycle on the TS diagram so now let's look at the efficiency of the a standard Brayton cycle so again efficiency is given by this and we have the heat rejection that is Q 
QL takes place at a constant pressure. So for a unit mass of gas, let's say we have heat rejected is Cp T4 minus T1 and heat that is absorbed is also at constant pressure. So we have Cp times T3 minus T2. So again, we can write this as this. Now for the Brayton cycle, note that the pressures at states 2 and 3 are same and pressure at states 1 and 4 are the same. Therefore, we can write the ratio P3 by P4 that is pressure at state 3 that is the inlet to the turbine by pressure at the exit of the turbine is equal to P2 by P1. So P1 is the pressure at the inlet of the compressor and P2 is the pressure at the exit of the compressor. Now again we note that process 1 to 2 and 3 to 4 are isentropic so we can relate these pressure ratios with temperature ratios. So for an ideal gas that is calorically perfect we can write P2 by P1 is equal to T2 over T1 raised to power gamma over gamma minus 1 and we note that P2 by P1 is P3 by P4 from here and therefore we can write this as T3 by T4 raised to power gamma over gamma minus 1. So from here and here we see that T2 by T1 is equal to T3 by T4 that means T4 by T1 is equal to T3 by T2 and therefore these terms cancel out and the thermal efficiency can be simply written as 1 minus T1 over T2 and what is T1 over T2 from this equation over here we see that this can be written as 1 minus 1 over P2 by P1 raised to power gamma minus 1 over gamma. This equation shows that the efficiency of the air standard Brayton cycle depends only on the isentropic pressure ratio that is the ratio of the minimum and the maximum pressures. As expected this efficiency is less than that of a Carnot cycle operating between the maximum and minimum temperatures. So again if we have a Carnot cycle working between temperatures T3 and T1 which are the maximum and the minimum temperature then the efficiency of the Carnot cycle would be 1 minus T1 over T3 and from this TS diagram clearly we see that T3 is greater than T2 and therefore the efficiency of the Brayton cycle which is given by 1 minus T1 by T2 is less than that of the Carnot cycle as expected. Note that the actual gas turbine engine differs from the idle cycle due to irreversibilities in various processes and thermodynamic analysis of an actual engine can be done by incorporating the efficiencies of various components such as the compressor and the turbine. Now note that an important feature of the Brayton cycle is the large amount of compressor work compared with the turbine work and note that in the Brayton cycle the compressor might require 40 to 80 percent of the output of the turbine. This is particularly important in the actual gas turbine where irreversibilities reduce the turbine work and increase the compressor work and the turbine has to run the compressor and therefore due to irreversibilities the net work output would be even lower. 
and this is in contrast to the ranking cycle where only 1 to 2 percent of turbine work is required to drive the pump. This shows the advantage of the cycle based on a condensing fluid such as the ranking cycle where the specific volume during the compression step is significantly lower than that during the expansion step. So what we have discussed till now are the power cycles but note that a heat engine in reverse operates as a refrigerator. Therefore, this Brayton cycle, if we operate in reverse, it works as a refrigerator. So if we want to use this Brayton cycle as a refrigerator, then this turbine works as a compressor and this compressor works as a turbine. We are operating this whole cycle in reverse. And then from state 3 to state 2, gas, that is air, this cooled so that its temperature goes down and thereafter it is expanded to a lower temperature and then during the heat absorption process that is from state 1 to state 4 the refrigerator working on the Brayton cycle absorbs heat from the refrigerated space. So this is how you can operate the Brayton cycle in reverse and use it as a refrigerator. Therefore, this temperature T4, if we use Brayton cycle as the refrigerator, would be the temperature of the refrigerated space. Because in this process 1 to 4, we have to absorb heat from the refrigerated space and this state 4 can have temperature that is just lower than the temperature of the refrigerated space to absorb heat. Therefore, T4 can be thought of as the temperature of the refrigerated space and heat is rejected to the ambient in process 3 to process 2. During the heat rejection process, the minimum temperature one can attain is that of the ambient air. So, T2 can be thought as the temperature of the ambient air. So this is how one can operate the Brayton cycle in reverse as a refrigerator. Note that when we have this Brayton cycle in reverse then this compressor this works as a turbine so that the gas that is air expands from state 2 to state 1. Now, unlike in the vapor compression refrigeration cycle, the work output during the isentropic expansion process, that is going from state 2 to state 1, is not negligible. Therefore, we have retained the turbine, whereas in the vapor compression refrigeration cycle, this work output during this isentropic expansion was negligible because the substance is almost in the liquid state and therefore there is little work output that can be derived. But here we have to retain a turbine because this work output is not negligible. Derivatives of this cycle are used for air liquefaction where air is liquefied and you get liquid gases such as liquid nitrogen. This completes our discussion on the power and refrigeration cycles using idle gas as the working substance. Till this point, we have covered the zeroth law, first law and second law, the basics of these laws and how to apply these laws to engineering equipment. And in the next lecture, which will be our last lecture, we'll just have a brief discussion on the third law of thermodynamics and wrap up this course.